Welcome back. Today we're going to tie Kelly Gallup's Triple Dungeon. Uh, the original, not the Menage Dungeon. Maybe revisit that one here with the multi-cam. A little on down the road, but we'll go to the original Triple Sex Dungeon. Um, this one, it's going to take a little while so we'll get comfortable, as I alluded to last week. Um, this one is a fly that absolutely elicits heat. Um, if nothing else, this is a great fly for locating fish. Um, it, for whatever reason, I don't know if it's the size of it, it brings out that territorial pred predatory instinct um, that brown trout have. And like I said, if nothing else, if, it's, if they're not eating it, it's a great way to locate fish, come back, you know, um, 15, 20 minutes later to the same spot, different fly, smaller fly, dead drift, whatever it may be, this is a great pattern to locate fish. But nine times out of 10, they're smashing this thing uh, when they come after it. So we'll go ahead and get started. I'm scaling this one down just a touch today um, from how I normally time. We're gonna go, I have material on my face already. We're gonna go with a four on the back and let me get this adjusted in the camera slightly I think I like that we're gonna go with those size four on the back from MFC it's a 70 50 we're gonna go with two in the middle and then a one aught for our front hook so as always we're just gonna get a quick thread base down here gel spun 100 and to start, we're going to do this one. We're going to do a little different color combination on this one today, too. We're going to do this in tan and brown. Uh, good looking. It's a good looking color combination. Also one that I've done pretty well on over the years. Um, we're going to start with some tan here. This is just some marabou. I'm going to go slightly longer than the overall length of my hook just slightly longer get a little bit of extra whip onto that tail and we'll get that secured in place and run that right to the front just to add a little bit of bulk a little bit of taper to the fly and get that all secure I'm not taking it all the way up to the eye because I'm still going to have a set of rubber legs and then some marabou for an overwing on top of that. So I'm not taking it all the way back. Uh, let me see here. Next up we're going to go with some internal flash. This is some copper holographic. Yeah, those two are crinkled up pretty bad. Let me see here. We'll take three strands on this. A little bit bigger of a fly, so we'll take a little bit extra. I want to take this now and same as all of the other ones with the marabou tails. Just going to run that down the side. I'm going to stop it just a little bit short of the length of the tail. Go through here, trim that up even. And we've got three strands on each side, roughly. Yeah, we've got three on each side. Now, I'm going to tone this a little bit on the tail. I'm going to go with some brown over the top. Kick that off to the side. wet that marabou just a little bit and then like I was saying right over the top on this same length slightly longer depending on how you want to dress that fly up I typically go just slightly longer I mean we're talking just fractions right there Oh, let me see here. 
we'll go with the copper wire here. This is a size small. Um, when you take this, just make sure that you take enough um, to work with. Don't try and get it absolutely to the right length. If you waste a little bit, it's not the end of the world. Make sure that you have enough to work with and it's not going to be frustrating you trying to get this counter wrap on the schloppen. Let's see the length that I'm working with right there. Probably a good, what, four inches or so. Um, somewhere about that. I'm going to have enough to work with. I'm going to have enough to be able to capture all the schloppen and it's not going to be so short to where I'm really going to be fighting it toward the end trying to get everything taken care of. I'll still have good control over it. Now we'll just go ahead and form a dubbing loop before we move to the front. Um, let me see, we'll get our tool there, set that off to the side, and then finish with this. We'll just take that right to the front stopping it right where we where we stopped with our tan and then we're going to trim that off now i'm going to go ahead with a half hitch like i was saying before i'm leaving myself a little bit of room right here in the front because um, i still have legs and some marabou for an overwing that i need to get in there now we're going to go with our body material this is going to be a tan uv ice dub get this here this stuff's a little bit longer than what uh, what you typically get with this ice stub. It's still going to work for us though. It'll still work for us. That's sun coming into the back there. I don't know if that's messing with that view or not. Looks alright up on the monitor. Looks alright. So we're just going to twist this up. I had a couple spots there that I wasn't too crazy about. I had a little bump in that, so now I just want to take and twist that up a little bit tighter. Pick out a couple of fibers here and there. Make sure that my taper's good for my body. Get that first complete wrap right underneath or right in front of my tail. And then just work your way right to the front and along the, I cut that one a little bit short actually took that one a little bit short yeah. just throw a little bit here in a quick loop and finish that off typically don't like doing them that way but I think we'll be alright I think we'll be alright Alright, now we're going to go with a schlop, uh, schlopping feather here for the back. I want to try and find something on the shorter end. Uh, those are all pretty long right there. I picked a couple out ahead of time, but I didn't really, didn't really like the length on that one. So I'm going to go back to this one here. It's a little bit shorter. I think it'll be a little bit cleaner on the fly, especially on a size four. Um, if you're starting with a two like I typically do or a one, um, the length isn't going to matter a whole lot, but I don't want this thing being so long that it's just going to overtake the entire fly. So we'll get that tied in. We're going to start by grabbing this with our hackle pliers and then make sure that your hackle is going the direction that you want it. Uh, I don't know, that's a little long. That's a little long. Yeah. I think it'll be all right. We'll just counter wrap this. Trapping your finger in a size four. That felt lovely. 
trap and you're slopping in place, we'll go ahead around this, tie the wire in. You're good to go on that. Your slopping is where it needs to be. This is a little bit long. I'm down toward the end of this pack, so I mean, pickings are pretty slim. I probably would have started that back slopping just a little bit shorter than what it wound up being. That's a little bit long for me, but uh, overall, I think it'll be all right. It's just a little, just a shade long. I'll pick out a couple of these fibers that I trapped in here. Just get those out of the way. Everything's looking pretty clean there. Now we're going to go with our rubber legs. These are gold, amber, and black uh, fly enhancer legs. I'm going to use two on the back hook, two on the middle, and then three on the front. I'm just going to figure eight right over the top of that. Manipulate these before you tighten down your, your thread. I'm going to get one more wrap and then pull down tight. That thread that we made the figure eight with on the top, it's now down into those rubber legs secured up to the hook. So we're in good shape there. Everything's in place and your rubber legs aren't going to go anywhere on you. Yeah, those are, yeah, that length will work. That length will work. We'll let that be. That's about going almost three quarter of the way back the tail for the length is what we have on that. Now we're going to start building our overwing. Um, this is one part of the fly when I first started tying the dungeons that um, admittedly I didn't do good enough with. I didn't really pay attention to the importance of this as far as how it dresses your fly and the appearance that you get and also the extra motion that is that is gained from this um, as I tied them over the years started paying more attention to this overwing and realized how how big of a difference it makes when you take the time and put a good overwing in there I'm gonna save that one for closer to the front that's a really nice thick piece there um, let me see here. As I go to the front, I try to to work in the thicker pieces. I can start a little sparse in the back and that's going to be fine. I prefer not to, but I can start a little bit more sparse in the back. But as I get to the front, I want to make sure that I have some good thick pieces for my overwings. So we'll start with this one right here on the back. If you have to, you can double them up. I'm not going to worry about it too awful much on this back one. Like I said, as I get to the front, I really start working my way into the thicker pieces, making sure that I have a good taper going forward. Oh, I'm going to have to double that one up, I think. Busted my thread there on that hook. Not starting off too hot on this one. Not starting off too hot. Uh, let me get a look over the top of that. Yeah, that's too sparse. I want to find something a little thicker. I need to thicken that up a little bit, so we're going to go ahead and work on that here. There's no sense tying this, this entire fly, getting to the front of it, looking at that back and being like, boy, I wish I had some more coverage on that overwing. May as well just take the time, do it right now, that way you're going to be happy with the fly when it's done. So I knew that I wasn't going to be happy with it, so I'm just going to add one more overwing to this, and then I'll try and pick out some really good ones for the, fr the front or the middle and the front. Got a little close to the eye on that one. We'll clean that up a little bit. I'm 
must have a burr or something on that right on the front of that hook keep catching it and cutting that thread so we got that cleaned up everything looks all right that slopping's not bothering me as much as I thought it would I guess that length's gonna be all right there um, Trim that off. Yeah, it looks good. That looks pretty good. I'm just going to slide a straw over the top of that and then grab a marker here. Just touch up that thread slightly. Work my way through that. Just touch up that thread color it just a bit and then go with our connection wire here this is um, 19 strand beetle on 38 thousandths you can go up to 46 if you want on this bigger fly um, I typically stick with just the uh, 38 thousandths these days uh, let me see here We're going to jazz this one up a little bit today, put some blue beads in it. Go with some blue beads on that. Man, that sun's really coming through the back. Good thing about this time of year is it's not up for too long, so it won't be interfering for too much longer here. Still doesn't look terrible in that back. Alright, like I was saying, we're going with a size 2 for our middle hook. Um, I used to run shanks on these middles. Um, if you're in a place to where, you know, there's a 2 hook restriction or even a 1 hook restriction, um, if you're going to cut any hooks off, start in the back. If you have a 2 hook restriction, cut your back hook off. If you have, what I mean by cutting it, it's going right at this bend right here and take a pair of um, needle nose or whatever just cut it right there um, and just have essentially a shank or you can tie them with shanks whichever way you want to go um, I kind of fell away from tying with shanks a little bit I don't know why I just didn't quite get the motion that I can get out of this out of the hook so this is what I prefer to go with but like I was saying start your start in the back if you have a two hook restriction cut the back one if you have a one hook restriction cut the back in the middle but always keep that front hook that's where the predatory fish are going to eat 90 percent of the time is on that front hook so go ahead and keep that now we're going to go and tie this in my straw is a little bit on the short side here but that's all right i just need to keep material out of my way for a little bit of time so tying in our connection here, I've got, like I said before, the two beads. I don't know if I like, yeah, I'll take it. I thought my connection was, or I thought my wires were crossed up on me there, but they look good. So I'm going to take that, I'm going to go one wrap around the back here just to secure that up a little bit more and then we'll take these to the front I got a little carried away I was checking the monitor there while I was tying that spun around on me some so now I'm just gonna take double that wire over Once again, double this one over and run our connection to the back. Now we're going to build the skirt on this fly. Uh, yeah, I'll take that connection. That looks pretty good. We're going to build the skirt on this one. Like I was saying, I need to find my tan marabou here. What I used to do when I was when I was tying this fly is I used to always use um, 
the after shaft on the on the schloppen this stuff right here um, you can still use it I mean it makes a nice um, it makes a nice skirt I just like using this marabou a little bit better I think I get some better coverage on that skirt so that's what I tend to use nowadays I'm sure you've seen this in previous videos um, I just take a chunk of this right like that take my thumb bust those off right there and then you've got a nice little tuft of hair I don't even know if I was in the frame on that one probably not I'll, I'll redo it on this next one I'll re-explain it I should say and then I'm just running that hair right into or just right past the eye of the hook on my back hook just cover that up with some nice thread wraps nice and even nice and clean we've got everything sitting how we want it right there and then I'll make sure I'm in the frame on this one because I probably wasn't on that last one take the same amount of hair off of this side of the marabou and then just peel that off to the side and then take your thumb take your finger or your thumbnail pinch that right against that and then you have that nice clean section right there for your skirt same thing on the opposite side so I'm doing one on mine one on the camera side and then we're gonna find a good piece of marabou for our overwing here or not really an overwing but we're gonna we're gonna cover this up we're gonna have this transition going I can take this straw off now that way I can explain it a little bit better we're just gonna keep this brown transition or that brown streak all the way down the back and I want this brown going into my back overwing so you can see how that marries together right there it's probably just shy of halfway back that rear overwing and then I want to secure that in place get everything how I want it there and then just clean this up with some thread wraps working right to the front make sure that everything's good there that looks good everything's clean right there we've got a nice transition both from the skirt with that tan to the tan on the body and then also the brown over the top really nice clean transition and like I said before I really can't overstate how much of a difference this makes on your fly um, both on the vise and in the water on the vise it just looks ten times better on the wall in the water there's so much more motion created by that and you also have a really distinct um, color differential between the two it makes the fly perform so much better in the water really take your time and do this I noticed with some of the flies that I've tied years ago I'll take them out and fish them once in a while and I'll look at them in the water and it's just it, it's just not the same so take your time with those get your over wings right and uh, you'll you'll have a lot more confidence in this fly it'll, it'll it'll perform a lot better for you so once again we're gonna go back to our copper wire here that's a good catch I would have had wire everywhere back to the copper wire we're gonna tie this in that sun's not blinding me in the back anymore so that's nice and we'll get that tied in get that in place I'm gonna double this over and just capture it that way it doesn't slide out when I'm going to counter wrap that slopping and that's a little bit on the long side it'll wind up getting in my way just take a little bit off okay form our dubbing loop again I'm gonna add a little bit extra I came up a little bit short on that last on that back hook 
form the dubbing loop. We've got everything how we want it there. Just going to get a couple of thread wraps up in the front and then grab our spinner. Half hitch that and then we're going to get our ice dub for our body. Grab that ice stub, we'll throw this in our loop here. That's probably going to, well, no, that should be all right, actually. That should be all right. Got a couple spots that are a little bit short. There we go. We're just going to spin this up. I'm not worried about correcting everything as it sits right now. Once that loop gets a little bit tighter, it's going to bring up any imperfections. I can shift this stuff around. And then I'll give it one more spin and I should have a nice, nice loop there for our body. Got a little bit of marabou captured there. One complete wrap right in front of the skirt. Everything's clean. Now we're just going to work our way right to the front and we got enough this time. I'm going to tie that off. And we're going to go with another piece of schlop in here. Ideally, what will happen when you're tying in your schloppen is as you go forward, your schloppen length matches. So shorter in the back, you know, your second longest in the middle and then your longest in the front. Um, ideally, it's not going to be the end of the world. If it's not, but you definitely don't want something extremely long on your back hook. It's just going to throw your taper off and it's going to look off a little bit. Um, I'm going to try and get as close to that back length as I can. I think this feather is going to be pretty good here. So we'll have that tied in. And we'll grab our pliers again. And manipulate this package side is going to the front yeah that length looks pretty good I'm happy with that I'll go ahead and fluff this out grab our wire we'll counter wrap this Rip that right through. My hand's wanting to slide off of that wire. And we'll go ahead and trim that up. Get that wire out of our way and we're just about done with this back hook. I gotta go in and trim out that little tag end right there from the schloppen. I gotta check this back hook too, make sure I did it back there. Okay, we did. Couldn't remember doing it. It may have ripped off in my hand. I think I was focused more on the length of that, uh, more on the length of that schloppen in the back than I was at the time, and I wasn't paying attention if I cut that off or not. So, good to double check it. Once again, gold amber and black for our rubber legs here set of two once again figure eight and we're good to go one two really pull down tight like i said before that thread's going to go right into it's going to cut into no not cut into it's going to sink into that rubber take it right down to the hook and it's nice and secure Trim those legs a little bit longer than we did the back ones. And then we've got another overwing getting thicker as we go. I'm running this overwing into the skirt section, probably halfway back into that skirt as it sits. 
it's going to be a long overwing. We got one, two. Get that nice and clean through there. Everything's looking pretty good. Got nice thickness on that overwing. I'm pretty happy with how it's sitting. I want to get a wrap right in front of that. Just clean that eye up slightly before I cut that. There we go. Go ahead and whip finish this one. We're on our way. We're on to the third and final hook. We've got a little bit of work to do on this one. This is where the details really come into play. We'll speak through them as we go. We'll get into the deer hair head and all that fun stuff. Color that up just a touch. Slide a straw over the top of that. Keep those legs and everything out of my way. And before I take this out of the vise, I'm going to go back with another strand of beetle on here, or another length of beetle on. And we'll try and find some. What do we got here? We'll try to find some beads. sort through those. There's some junk in there I just need to toss. And we'll get this out of the vise. Set that off to the side. Now we're going to go with our final hook. This is the 7051 aught. I think this may actually be a Daiichi. I have a pack of one aughts on the Daiichis left over from years ago. I'm starting to go through those as I'm tying with the one aughts just to clear more space in the back there and the pegboards and all that. So this one's actually a Daiichi, but MFC 7050, uh, Daiichi 2470, 2461. Essentially the same, the same style of hook. They're almost identical. Whichever one you prefer to use. So now I'm going to go with some large red lead eyes. And we'll get those secured into place. Just figure eight and over the top, just get them pretty secure. And then we're going to grab some zap here. Hopefully this bottle's not... No. It's glued to itself. It's at the very end there and it's starting to catch a lot of, a lot of glue on the threads when you close it up. So I'm just going to go with some... Just going to go with some Loctite gel. Instead, there I got. I'm not gonna sit there and fight that bottle for a minute trying to get the zap out. So, all right, we've got those secured into place. I'm just gonna finish this up with a little thread base here, going to the back, resting at the barb of the hook. Same thing. I'm just gonna work that forward, building up a little bit more thread for my wire to grab onto and we're sitting good I want to make sure before I move any further that my eyes are in place and they're nice and even everything looks clean there we're gonna go with our back two hooks get these tied in nothing new here just make sure that you're wires are running parallel to one another set this off to the side secure it into place one two 
three to five loose wraps on there. See if you like your distance. If you need to, you can you can adjust. But I think I'm gonna. I think I like that distance that I have right there between on the connection. I'm gonna pull that tight. Make sure it didn't shift it at all. It's sitting how we want it to. And then I'm just gonna bring one wrap around all of this underneath. Just kind of pull that and then secure it over the top. Run these all the way to the front and then I'm gonna get that locked in right there. Just remember that your time with three hooks, um, you don't want one of these biting you, putting a, putting a leak in one of the thumbs or fingers or something. Just remember that your time with three. I'm probably for, gonna forget and stick myself, but it'll be free entertainment right there. All right, let me finish up getting that wire secured and we'll go to the skirt section once again. I'm going to find another piece of tan marabou. I prefer something that's a little on the thicker side. So if you have a junk plume or something that has the real webby fibers down at the bottom. This would be a good application to use them. Well, a little on the short side for me. A little on the short side. Just going to bust that up once again. Have a nice section leading into just past the eye of our middle hook. Clean those up really good. And then same thing on the opposite side. I just want to pick this one here. Run this down. Just giving me a good connection or a good cover between my connection there. Measure that out, get the same length on the opposite side. And getting that secured in place. There you can see from that top view we've got our tan running down one side and then down the opposite. I didn't like how that was sitting there. That one's a little longer too. Just slightly longer, so I'm gonna bust that up, shorten that up a little bit. All right, now I need to find two, maybe three, good plumes here. I'm gonna try and find something nice and thick. Like I said, we're continuing what we started on that back section making this thicker as we go forward this is all pretty sparse marabou on the brown here pretty sparse I went through and pre-sorted a lot of stuff before I started this video this is one thing that I forgot was my overwing so just stick by here or stand by and we'll, we'll uh, struggle through this section right here trying to find something good for the rest of this fly. Yeah, I'm not going to like that one, but I'll find another one that's thick here so we can have a good cover. Two. There's a winner right there. There's a winner. I'll explain what I'm doing with this one, but I just want to show you a quick look at two of the different feathers that I selected. The one on the right, you can see how sparse that is, and then you can see how webby this section is right there. 
The key to it is, is finding something that doesn't have a really thick stem up at the top. If it's at your tie-in point, it's not the end of the world, um, but just make sure that that thick stem doesn't go the whole way up here because it'll likely kick to one side or the other when you have it tied in and it'll make it difficult to give you a good appearance on that fly. So, now that we got through the marabou, let me get that off out of the way. We're gonna get this connection covered up here. I'm safe to take this off once again. Get that out of the, way, out of the camera. There's our connection right there. Once again, like I said on the last one, I just want this going about to the halfway point of the overwing on the back or on that previous hook. Get that tied in, get it secured. Uh, I don't know. I think I'm going to add a sparse one here just for a little bit more bulk. I just want a little bit more in that package. I wet it, so that's probably why it looks a little sparse to me, but I really don't think you can overdress this. I mean, don't go getting carried away and putting 20 feathers back there, but I really don't think you can overdress this as far as the amount of bulk that you can get out of two feathers. The thicker, the better on that section. Within reason, I better clarify that. Within reason. All right, find my junk scissors again before I start my loop and everything. Before I get going, I'm gonna take and tie in the rib for the counter wrap on the last piece of schlopping. Hook that end around, and then we're going to form our last dubbing loop. There we go. Get that set into place, and then we're going to work our way just to behind the eyes. With this marabou. I got a little dip there and I want to add just a little bit of bulk so I'm going to double that feather over and just fill in that gap slightly from where I doubled that wire or my articulation wire over. Cuts that gap down just a little bit um, the taper for your underbody, like what I'm building right there, isn't a huge deal because we use some loose ice dub on this and the shallopin adds volume to it. So, I mean, it's not real apparent, but it's a good, it's a good practice to get into, you know, for if you're t tying like some, um, some bucktail streamers or, you know, dries and nymphs, tapers, everything in that world. Um, with these bigger streamers, you can get away with some mistakes, but or you can get away with some sloppy work. You can't get away with it on the dries or the nymphs. So, like I was saying, just a good habit to get into. There's a little bump right there I don't like. There we go. Just shifting all this stuff around, getting it how I want it. Try not to trap any of that marabou, and then, nah, hung up on the hook point there. Nice and clean going through, everything looks good. Now we'll just run this through on our body all the way up to the front, right behind the eyes. I'm leaving myself a little bit of room to work with. A little bit of room to work with there. There you can see this fly's starting to come into shape there. 
starting to come together. So we're going to take our last piece of slopping and I'm going to go down toward this bottom. I'm going to try and get some of that fuzz in there. If the shaft of the stem is too thick, don't worry about getting that fuzz in there. You don't want anything, uh, you don't want that stem breaking on you or anything like that. If it's real rigid, it will, it will bust. Um, but this one here is really, um, really thin, so I'm going to be able to get some of that fuzz in on that first wrap or two of slopping. Grab this feather once again, package side going to the front, and you can see that fuzzy section right there. I get nice, even, consistent tension all the way back, even spacing. I caught a little piece of brown marabou right there that. would have to get cut up if I didn't catch it right there. I can't have that. Can't have that. My OCD won't allow it. Alright, I got my wire twisted around here. Get over here. There we go. Got a little carried away on the length on that one, I think. All right, capture that, and then, hmm, hmm, well, shit, <laughs> try it again, try it again, I'll keep this wire out of the way this time, and hopefully, won't repeat that, all right, take two, like I was saying, Package side going to the front of your fly. That one rubber leg's bound and determined to get trapped in there as well. It's that same brown piece of marabou. There we go. We'll try this again. Try this again. I'm just going to run that by hand. That way I know it's trapped and secured. And we'll work this right up to the front. There we go. Avoided disaster there for a minute. So now I'm just going to go ahead and trim that box or trim the rest of that off. Let me get these tools out of the way here. They're probably a little distracting on the back side. And we are going to go with our last set of rubber legs. This is a set of three here. Bring that slopping back. I gotta cut this section out right there. There we go. Set of three on the rubber legs. And we're gonna go same as before, the figure eight right over the top. You can see, let me explain this. As I was doing that figure eight, let me turn this. Because I'm so close to those eyes, I would typically go right here, and you can see those eyes kind of kick that thread off to the side. I'll do that one more time, you can see. That would typically be my thread path, and you can see that that eye just kicks that right off of the side there. This is a good example as to why you want to keep those thread wraps loose, because now what I'm able to do, the camera's probably not going to pick this up, there's that X right there. I can pick up with my rubber legs and now I can manipulate that X to where it's right on the top. 
I have it right where I want it. I still have my loose thread wraps. I pull down tight. Those subs or those previous wraps sink right into those rubber legs and then onto the hook. So I'm gonna really build some bulk on this one. I'm gonna take a sparse piece underneath. I'm running this. The length on this really isn't going to make a big difference. I want it touching the the uh, skirt connection or the, the cover, that brown section that I used for my connection on the back. I want it running into it, but I'm not worried about the length on that one so much as I am this one right here. Now this is the really thick plume of marabou that I found earlier. And this is the one that I want going over the top. That's going to go to about my halfway point on the previous plumes I tied in for the connection. There you can see how that all just kind of marries together the whole way through starting from that back one all the way to the tail on the brown back there so then we're going to go ahead and just trim this cut that get it out of the way and then i'm going to switch over because we're about to start on the deer hair work here i'm going to switch over to some gel spun 200. Get a quick whip finish on that, get everything out of the way. And before I go tying that on, I'm not going to cut those rubber legs just yet. I'm going to leave them how they're sitting for now. I'm going to throw a straw on there, get everything out of the way so nothing's going to interfere with working with this deer hair. So, We'll get our 200 in, and you can see I'm right behind the eyes right there. Let me get one good secure wrap in that. Now I'm going to go with, that looks great to me. That looks like a charcoal almost. No, I think it's brown. I just dyed this yesterday. I mean, the, the hide's still wet on it. Um, I just dyed this yesterday. It's not quite dry all the way. I dyed a couple of them charcoal and a couple of them like a really dark brown. And before it dries, it's going to be really tough to tell exactly what I have here. But uh, I think we got this as a brown. They're really close in color, so it's tough to tell. Um... That looks more gray. I don't know. This is what I'm going to use because the rest of this stuff, the brown that I have back there is absolute garbage. And there is some really good deer hair. Uh, Christy's buddy Drew shot one down in Bozeman. And he was nice enough to send the, send the hide up. and uh, So I went through and Tanned that one, fleshed it out and all that, and got some dye into it. So thanks for the hide, Drew. Really appreciate it. Get some flies sent down your way here before too long. Alright, so we're gonna measure this out. I want my collar going between the point and the barb of my hook. I was a little bit short on that. Yeah. I'm not really too happy with that. I need to restack it. Need to restack it. These this hair is still just a little bit damp, so it's not the easiest to work with, but it's gonna be easier than that garbage that I have from uh that I have in the back there. Alright, I'm going to 
gonna get that, set that in place. We have that cut off nice and square. And all we're doing is tying in our collar right here. So I've got one, two good solid wraps, maybe a third on that. And then I wanna flare that hair out. One, two, and then just work my way forward. You can see on this underneath side there, we've got that nice sunburst collar, a really thick, heavy collar. If anything on this, um, on these triples, I will push the collars back a little bit further, like going right to that barb of the hook on that one. I will push them back a little further just because it's such a big fly. Um, on the typical dungeons, you know, just your two hooks or your minis, whatever, I'll keep them right here. Uh, trying to stick right with the point of the hook. I will shorten my collars up slightly on that but sticking with the Tan and brown theme on this one I'm gonna go with Some bleached underneath here I'm going to go with some bleached deer hair on the bottom. This is a little bit on the short side too. But we'll make it work. We'll make it work. So I'm going to go one, two, and then a third, and I'm just gonna pull down, flaring that hair out. It's nice and neat on that bottom side. I don't have anything traveling to the top. Then I'm gonna go back with my brown-ish gray. It's more to the brown side. I really won't know until it dries fully, so it'll be interesting to see. It'll be a surprise once, uh, once it dries. Once again, we're just cleaning this out, getting rid of any of that under fur, any of the directional hair, trimming off the tips, and then I'm going to set this right on the top here. And go one, two, and then a third, just pulling that down. Now I want to separate all of this stuff and I'm going to go right in front of these eyes. Right in front of those eyes. And now all I'm going to do is spin one entire turn of brown on the front of that hook. try and get that as close to the hide as possible that way I'm working with the most length that I can get because I am going to be cutting these tips off I want to have a decent amount of length on this yeah I didn't get a good cut on that this is just one of the trimmings right here but it is a really good piece of deer hair there's some stuff back there that is just absolutely phenomenal. Some of the best deer hair that I've seen. That's the nice thing about processing your own hair. You don't have to go through all the stuff that's already been picked through. And you can really select the best of it for the different colors that you want and everything. Maybe something to look forward to in the next couple of years. I started talking with a couple of um, um, processors and taxidermists and everything. May wind up getting into the deer hair stuff here before too long. Kind of enjoy the process. I still need to dial in the, the dyeing process, but overall, I mean, I, I enjoyed it. It was fun going through and 
tanning everything and getting everything nice and cleaned up and selecting the hair. Enough rambling about that. Alright, so we had one good spin on that. You can see we have our eye exposed there. Now I'm just going to take this around, one, two, three, and whip finish. Same thing, one, two, three, and we'll get a whip finish. Cut that off. Now I'm going to go with the razor blade here. This one may be a little difficult to cut because, like I was saying, that hair is still wet. Or it's damp. I shouldn't say it's wet. It's still damp. I'm going to start on the bottom. Almost got ahead of myself there. I'm going to find my eyes, balance my hand right here, and I'm just going to make a clean cut right through there. Pretty level. And I'm going to work my way down to the eyes there. You can see that nice color break on the bottom there. A really nice color break between the two. You can follow that thing through. You could, I could have stacked another uh, bleach section underneath there, but I figured I'd just go ahead and take this and just do a spin around the front, kind of like that color break up underneath. But either way, whichever way you want to do it, it's entirely up to you. Now I'm just going to take and work my blade through there. You can see this stuff isn't quite wanting to cut too well because it's damp. Just going to have to work on that just a little bit extra. Yeah, I'll take my scissors and trim that the rest of the way, I think, because it's not going to want to. It's not going to want to cooperate with me. Well, maybe. Maybe. This blade probably needs to be replaced too. Yeah. I'll trim that up with the scissors. I'll trim that up the rest of the way. So, I'm just going to continue to work on this back here. I'm going to get rid of some of these longer bleached hairs. Just feathering through this. And I'm going to do some work with the scissors here. So I'm going to get everything out of the hook or out of the vise. That didn't feel good. I'm going to take this and trim against the grain on this hair. It's going to make this a little bit cleaner. Just a little bit cleaner. Once again, going against the grain, just getting the overall shape that I want on this. I'm gonna do a little bit more work with the scissors than normal. Because it's still pretty damp. Try and cut that against the grain there. There we go. That's coming into shape, make sure I don't mess up my collar at all. There we go. There we go. And get that into place. I'm going to trim the rest of this up as I'm saying that. I'm going to trim the rest of this up once I shut the cameras off. But you can get the overall shape that we're after on that. I do want to make sure that my eyes are exposed, so I'm just going to trim around those eyes a little bit. Make sure that I have a good view of them. And get that out of there. I'll trim the rest of that up once I shut everything off. I'm going to stop myself. I have to or else I'll, I'll add another 30 minutes to the video just trying to get it perfect. I would like to say, well, it is 
I, I do spend a lot less time on flies that I'm fishing. Um, but surprisingly, not really that much. I do spend less time, but I'm still a perfectionist when it comes to that deer hair work. I try and get everything looking good because when I take it out of the box, I want it looking um, as good as I as good as it can be. So I've got that brown marabou for my overwing coming right into that back one because of the because I lengthened out the collar a little bit. It doesn't show as well as it typically would. Let me get that back into place there we'll get everything cleaned up here and give it a quick rotation on the vise that color on the hair is just off a touch um, I doubt when it dries it it's going to go to that but I think that it looks pretty good overall honestly I, I don't mind that it's off a little bit for some reason I just like the way that that, that color blended there pretty well so there's a look on the underneath side and there's a hair that's not going to be able to make it. I gotta stop myself. I'll close my eyes and rotate this thing. <laughs> there we go. There's the underneath side you can see right there. Spin this thing around. We've got that brown going all the way back. For our overwings, that tan underneath. Overall, like I said at the beginning of this one, probably an hour ago, <laughs> that uh, this is has been a really good color combination for me. Another thing that you can do is you can uh, sub this this tan for yellow, and you have kind of like that brown trout three theme going throughout. Um, just mess around with the colors, see what you like. Uh, this is one, like I said, that has really worked good for me over the years. Um, one that I definitely have a lot of confidence in. But that is minus a little bit of trimming right there. Kelly Gallops Triple Dungeon. Um, once again, thanks to Drew for all the deer hair. Like I said, I'm going to get you some flies sent down that way here uh, before too long. But um, if you guys have questions or comments on this one, as always, leave them with me and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next Wednesday. Man, that's a long video.